Hey, welcome to our lesson on properties. Um, we're going to talk about several different properties today, so let's go ahead and get started. We aren't going to be talking, however, about the type of properties that you would buy or sell, but um, mathematical properties, commutative, associative, property of equality, the opposite of a sum, and the distributive property. Oh boy. So get out your notebooks because this is going to be a lot of vocabulary and hopefully it can help give you some ways of remembering it. The commutative property is like this. If you have A plus B plus C, when you're adding, it's the same thing as adding A, then C, then B. All right? When you're adding, it doesn't matter what order you go in. Um, the numbers commute from one place to another. That's the way I remember it. The commutative property commutes from one place to another. All right, the associative property, a little bit different. The numbers stay in the same order, A, B, C, A, B, C. All right, when you're adding, except that you use grouping symbols to change the order that you would add them. So in this one, you're adding A plus B first. In this one, you're adding B plus C. Does not matter what order you add things when you're adding them. So this is the addition pro associative property of addition. And we know that addition is associative. It doesn't matter which order you do it in. But the way that I remember associative property is I think of it like these grouping symbols are almost like um, at the in crowd or something like those. Those are the ones that choose to associate with each other. So I kind of think of like this, like these two. Maybe tomorrow this girl will be talking to the girl in the red shirt and the green one will be left out, you know, like girls in middle school or something. I don't know. Which ones you choose to associate with. Um, but they stay in the same order, A, B, C, A, B, C. Just add in those parentheses. All right. The third one that we're talking about is the property of equality. That one, I'm going to break it down a little bit more later. But for our major purposes, the property of equality will look like this. If there's something on one side of the equal sign, it's the same on the other side. A plus 1, A plus 1. A, A. So if you add 1 to one side of the equation, you add 1 to the other side of the equation. Um, in other words, whatever you see on one side, you have to do on the other side. Kind of like monkey see, monkey do. Hence, the monkey. I don't just like putting cute monkeys in there just for fun. There is actually a reason for it. So there we go. Now, um, you can also say if I'm taking 6 away from the left side, I'm going to subtract 6 from the right side. If I'm multiplying 8 times the right si left side, I'm going to multiply 8 times the right side. We use this a lot when we're doing proofs and solving and things like that. That's why I wanted to give several examples. But um, again, the property of equality. Now there's one other property that we use very rarely, um, but it is the opposite of a sum. Now if you remember, opposite numbers. The opposite number is a negative, right? The opposite of A is negative A. The opposite of B is negative B. The opposite of 3 is negative 3. So the way I remember this is that it's the opposite of two numbers being added together. If you ever see anything like this, opposite of a sum, it's opposite of sum. Um, this one here, the words just basically tell you exactly what it is. So it's not that hard to identify and remember this one, but um, again, not, not something you'll use an awful lot, but the opposite of the sum is the same as adding the two negatives together. All right, let's go ahead, um, break down the property of equality. The property of equality can be broken down into, whoops, three different parts. The reflective property, and that's if you've got something on one side, it's exactly the same on the other side very rarely used. We don't usually break down things into these three, but I just want to make you aware of them kind of briefly. The symmetric property, if A is B, then B is A. It looks very symmetric, right? A, B, B, A, like you've got a line of symmetry here. All right, it's just saying if one thing's equal to it, you can kind of switch the order. We use this a lot, but we oftentimes don't identify it as the, the symmetric property. And then the transitive property, which you'll hear talked about quite a bit because it sounds confusing and people like to make themselves think like, yeah, I'm real smart, I know how to do the transitive property. But all it is is it's, it's kind of like eliminating the middleman. If A is B and B is C, then A is equal to C. So if A is equal to 3 and 3 is equal to C, then 3 is equal to 3. A is equal to C. It's essentially like taking one step out of the whole process. If A is equal to something, and C is also equal to that something, 
and they're both equal to each other. Again, not really used very often, um, but it does, it, it can condense work. So we'll keep that one as sort of the, the most used of these three. Um, all right, now we're going to play a game show. Name that property. I've listed three different things here that all have exactly the same thing in common. They are the same property, although you've got different numbers in there, and we're moving the parentheses in actually exactly the same way in every single one. What's the property when you associate two numbers together? You leave them all in the same order, but two are associating together first, and then the other one at the end. What's the name of that one? What's the name of that one? Oh yeah, the associative property, right. That's the associative property because they are associating with each other. All right, move on to the next one. Name this property. What property is it when you've got something like 3 and 3? And then I add 4 to one side, I'm going to add 4 to the other side. 2 times x is equal to 2 times x, or 2x divided by 2 is equal to 2x divided by 2. When I do something to one side of the equation, I also do it to the other. That is, whoops, the ident or the I just about call it the identity property. But that one is the property of equality. All right? Property of equality. Boom, boom. All right? If you do it on one side, you do it on the other. Property of equality. Another property. That's a nice house. All right. This one says A plus B plus C is A plus C plus B. We're changing the order here. 1, 2, 3 is 1, 3, 2 when we're adding. 4, 7, 3, 3, 7, 4. We're adding them in the, the same numbers in a different order. The numbers are commuting from one place to another. We call that the commutative property. Yay! Did you get that one? So you're supposed to be doing these at the same time and saying, can I answer it before he gets to the punchline? All right. One more here. If x equals 4 and 4 is equal to y, then x is equal to y. If a equals 6 and 6 equals b, then a is equal to b. They're both equal to 6. Thank you very much. n is equal to 15. 15 is equal to p. Then n is equal to p. All right. Good. We're eliminating the middleman. And that is the transitive property. All right. That's the property of equality called the transitive property. And that one is the getting rid of the middleman property. One last property before we gonna get going there. When you have a negative times an addition problem or the opposite of a sum problem, then you can get rid of, give the opposite of this number minus or the opposite of this number plus the opposite of this number. The opposite of 6 plus the opposite of 2. The opposite of 8 plus the opposite of x. It's the opposite of a sum. That's what this property is. All right. Now we're going to talk about one last property. And this one here I actually use all the time and I think is quite helpful. And that's the distributive property. Whenever you're given a multiplication question like this, 3 times 2 plus x, we distribute what's outside the parentheses into the parentheses. So in other words, we're going to multiply 3 times 2 and 3 times x. And it's important that we do this. This is one of those things that is one of the biggest mistakes people make is to not multiply 3 times everything. They'll say 3 times 2 is 6 and just leave the x. And forget, this means 3 times everything in there. So we would have 3 times 2 and 3 times x, which gives us 6 plus 3x. Um, Later on, we're going to be talking about like terms and how you can't join these together. This is 6 plus 3 x's. We can't say that that's 9 x's because it's only 3 x's and a 6. So 3 x's plus 6. So that's actually our final answer written like that. It can't be simplified any further. That's the end result. So 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times x is 3 x. And that's it. All right. So this is the distributive property. Again, 4 times x, 4 times 2. 4 times x is 4x. Four, 4 times 2 is 8. That's how the distributive property works. There's another whole video on the distributive property because it can get complicated. So this is the distributive property. I just want to give you a little bit of an intro to the distributive property. 
Um, one thing, uh, just for fun, we can go ahead and reverse the distributive property if we want to. So we could take something like 21 plus 3x, and we can say, what is a common factor between those two numbers? Each of those numbers can be divisible by 3. So we could actually say this is 3 times 7 plus x. You say, um, how do you do that? Well, we can do the opposite and show you 3 times 7 is 21, and 3 times x is 3x. You see? So we can reverse it as well. Say, how would we make this into that? Well, we take the common factor of 3 and divide 3x divided by 3 is x, 21 divided by 3 is 7, and we can reverse it and use the distributive property to get it back. So we can kind of go both ways with the distributive property here. Um, lots of fun to do that. And here's another couple of questions that we can go ahead and use the distributive property to practice a little bit. In this one here, I've gotten some negative numbers, so we can practice with negative numbers. Again, I'm going to distribute everything from outside the parentheses to inside the parentheses. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 12 minus 6 is negative 18. So that will be my final answer. Nice. Then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to do the same thing. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. 3 times 2 is 6. Negative 12 plus 6 will give me a negative 6. All right? So that's how we would solve this type of problem using the distributive property. We distribute what's outside the parentheses to inside the parentheses. And if you wanted to, you could also try 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. I use the distributive property to show you that you'll get the same answer, but you could also choose negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 3 will give you the same result. So if you want to solve what's inside the parentheses first and then multiply, you can do that when they're just numbers. You can't do that when you've got a variable, though. So when you've got questions like this one, you absolutely must use the distributive property. 2 times n is 2n. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. That's my final answer. I cannot reduce that down any further. Negative 4 times n is negative 4n. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. That would be my final answer. I can't reduce it down any further because these are 4n's, negative 4n's, and that's minus 12. So you can't join those together. That's my final answer. All right? And then, again, going backwards, if we're given the same number here, 3 and 3, multiplying, we can actually rewrite it as 3 times 4 plus n, or x times y plus 3, using the distributive property kind of in reverse. So those are the ways the distributive property works. Um, Again, there's a whole video on the distributive property, but I just wanted to introduce you briefly to those different properties that there are, some ways that can help you to remember them. Hopefully that lesson's been helpful for you, and have a wonderful day.